If you haven't had an opportunity to watch the pilot episode of Constantine, stop listening now, major spoilers, here we go. Today is October 24th, 2014. Uh, finally, you know, the day that DC Comics pretty much just takes over the television is here. It's finally that day. And the, um, you know, demon hunter, uh, master of the occult, yeah, John Constantine has arrived. And I think he arrived um, in a decent way. Okay, I, I think that fans of John Constantine should be really thrilled, and I think that they'll definitely probably talk about this for a very, very long time. Me, who you know, I'm not really, I'm not really that big of a John Constantine fan, just a fan of DC Comics and a fan of Keanu Reeves' variation. Um, I was, I was happy. Uh, I, I guess I was more disappointed with the editing and the CGI and stuff like that. That's the only reason why I didn't give it a perfect rating, man. But I gave it 8.5 out of, out of, out of 10 stars. Um, the episode uh, picks up with uh, um, John Constantine in this location. Um, and I forget the name because I'm really, really sleepy. Like I said, it's 11.14 p.m. here in Hawaii. But anyway, he's uh, going through like this therapy, okay? And uh, it's almost like an electroshock therapy where he's trying to I don't know, zap his mind to where he doesn't believe in those things. Or maybe he's trying to forget them. Who, who knows? He's going through some type of therapy to um, forget him or, or make him stop forgetting and talking to demons. And then all of a sudden, you know, he gets out of that therapy. He's sitting inside of like a psychiatric war. People are going crazy around him. And all of a sudden he sees these roaches. The roaches lead him into this room where this girl, this lady, this demon is writing on the wall. It looks like Beelzebub um, because, you know, the beetles and all that stuff and flies and insects and stuff. But she's writing something on the wall. All of a sudden he uses his you know, his uh, occult knowledge, which I really love this, man, um, to actually, you know, um, take the demon and kind of do like an exorcism, if you will. And he starts, you know, throwing out names and Latin and um, whatever other language there is. And then that kind of sets the precedence, man. Like, it's really spooky. I'm not gonna lie. There's this part where the, the lady turns her head around like a 360 degree swivel and her eyes are white. You know, it's not, it's definitely not a human. It's, it's, it's a demon. And then after that, he throws her and, and they fight for a little bit. And then um, you get introduced later on. I'm going to fast forward a couple of spots because I don't really feel like talking that much about this uh, episode or um, or this, this series. It just depends on how episode two goes. But anyway, you get introduced to a, a familiar um, scene or a familiar item from John Constantine, from what I understand about it. And that's the cab. It's this famous cab that like drives real fast and whatever. And you, you get to introduce him into or get introduced to um, a couple of characters that are going to be on the show. There's this Rachel Wise looking character who's played by the actress, man. Um, excuse me, the actress uh, Lucy uh, Griffiths. She plays this uh, character called Liv Aberdeen. And then Rachel Wise's character was uh, Angela Dodson. Um, I don't know why they look so familiar. I don't know why they look so similar. Maybe that's just because of the comic book source. But um, I really did like her. I, I liked, I really, really liked her, man. And I, I'm saying liked, I guess, in the past tense, because from what I understand, they're going to move away from that uh, chapter um, starting from episode two and just kind of like wipe her away and, and get rid of it. Because I guess it may look too familiar, too similar to the Constantine 2005. Then they want this to Constantine 2014 to be like a brand new, you know, close to comic book source and et cetera, et cetera. So they'll probably get rid of that. But she did a really good job. Um, how do you want to say it? There was a situation where John Constantine was uh, protecting this girl. A uh, little black girl, man, um, who is just absolutely adorable. She's very cute, and, and you, can, you can tell that it kind of changed John Constantine because he couldn't save her, and now she's trapped in hell. She might be dead. She might be alive. Who knows? But the the demons and stuff, they use this little girl to kind of um, make John Constantine, you know, angry and upset and try to trick him and stuff like that. So that, that's going to be probably played um, – not played out, but played throughout and used, utilized throughout the entire series – um, there was this, uh, these demons are kind of attracted to, uh, to live and, um, and she, I'm just gonna call her Aberdeen from now. Cause I don't like live. I think that's a stupid name. Um, yeah, it's just, a, that's a dumb name anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're attracted to Aberdeen and, and, and they, uh, try to assassinate and kill her throughout the entire episode. And then you, um, kind of, um, get reintroduced towards the end of the episode to John Constantine doing, um, his, uh, his famous, like, um, 
magic and rituals and stuff like that to kind of show you that he's very, very knowledgeable in this. He's an expert. He's a master. He is the demon hunter. And, you know, they 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 also show you a couple of little scenes from the Constantine 2005. Now, obviously, this is based off a comic book, and I know I keep going back to Constantine 2005, but that's how I know John Constantine. That's why or what I'm familiar with. And that's kind of like what I based, um, you know, the reasoning behind me even watching it. It wasn't because I read the, the comic books because I didn't. Um, I do have them, but I, d I didn't read them at all. Um, but they, uh, show you, um, some of the, like, you know, um, um, rituals that they put around the door, like salt. Um, they show you that John Constantine, he writes in white and all this stuff is like a cult symbolism. And he has this room, like a trophy room, if you will, or just maybe like an occult room of knowledge. And there's a couple of little items in there. Easter eggs from DC comics, uh, Easter eggs from Smallville, hint, hint, no spoilers, but go, go check that out. And, um, anyway, he, long story short, he saves the day, you know, by protecting the girl. Um, he kind of tricks the demon to come into a circle. And then after that, sends it into, uh, to hell using this like fiery tornado, man. I guess it's almost like something off the flash. If you be honest, with yourself and you, and you think about it that way um i really really loved um the way that manny who was played by um uh harold um pierre or pierre new or Pereira, something like that i forgot the guy the dude off of oz man he plays a um um an angel not a demon but an angel and this the the cool thing about the special effects is that the angel takes the the form of a, of a human being and then that's that he can co communicate and um and contact and talk to john constantine but he can actually like you know if i'm sitting here talking to you know like my best friend he'll take the form of a best friend and then but he'll be him but he'll like take over his body for just a couple of seconds and then talk through him and stuff like that but what you see on screen is you actually get to see the angel you get to see his wings and stuff like that only for a little bit um the wings need some some work it's not like dominion which is perfect wings but they they they're, they're getting better um and i'm pretty sure they will improve on that as soon as they get more money uh <laughs> yeah so that guy, he's like helping uh, John Constantine out, trying to warn him, but also, you know, you know keeping an eye on him pretty much, man. Um, but he does, he does give him viable information and vital information that he can, he can use. Uh, let me see what else. There's pretty much nothing else, man, to be honest. Um, it was really a, a really boring episode um, because it felt like you were just watching Constantine 2005. I'm just, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, not going to lie. Um, there was this moment, you know, like in Constantine 2005, you know, where Keanu Reeves character and uh, Rachel Wise character, where she kind of pushes her down into this water, like baptism almost. And then she's able to see into the other world. And and um, also, you know, there's this other other couple moments where she can just see the dead. Well, John Constantine actually, you know, um, shows her this. And, and it, it was like a scene. It was pretty spooky because you can kind of see like parallel parallel universe and a parallel world to where the dead are walking and you can see them and interact with them like you can step in front of a train and you won't get killed if you're if you're i don't know attached to john constantine or hooked up to her or whatever but it was kind of cool just seeing them interact and it's showing you things that they you know didn't really go into that much detail inside of the movie man so i guess that's the point i'm trying to make the the, the episode was great I gave it 8.5 out of uh, 10 stars. I think it needs a lot of improvement. If if it's going to survive, it's going to need a lot more. And hopefully, you know, it has like 2 million likes on Facebook. Hopefully 2, two million people watched it at least. And then it'll get, you know, okay, it'll continue. But if not, it's going to get canceled. It, it's going to be horrible. But they set out for a goal. They said they were going to do some things and show us some things. And they did. Um, they are showing us more of John Constantine than we've ever seen before on the live screen, you know, sh you know, small screen, but live, but live action. And I think that that's, what's important. Everything else doesn't really matter. That's what we came out to see. We wanted to see a, you know, a live action DC comics character come to life and then connect it if possible to other universe. And I think they accomplished that. We just have to see how many episodes they get. Are they going to get 22 or are they going to get 16? Are they going to get 10 or are they going to get canceled? You know, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> If episode two is good, I'll have another podcast. If it's not, you probably won't see it. Um, and the only time I will upload anything about Constantine, if it's, if it's a really, really great 10 out of 10 star episode. And the same thing goes for The Flash, Gotham, all that stuff. I just don't have enough time. And um, it's, I'm not going to waste my time either. Because if I didn't like it, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to listen to it. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Uh, what do you think about John Constantine's uh, premiere? And uh, what do you think about NBC editing? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm out of here. Thanks again for watching.